Ooh, okay. Uh, chapter 1.5, number 11. Let me see. Thank you. Oh, yes, okay. So the following is a matrix, not in uh, reduced row echelon form, which is 1. Minus 4, oh, 3, minus 5, and then the, the, the 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, minus 4, 0, okay, 4 zeros, 1 minus 4, and lastly, 0, 0, 0, Zero, zero, zero. Okay, and, oh, let me see. Oh, good, good, you can see this from the uh, board. And then, um, notice first of all, we want to solve the, so, sorry, we want to solve the equation ax equals zero. So if you want, you can add up a bunch of zeros if you want. But the important thing to notice is that this is in row echelon form. So it does look like a staircase pattern. And before you even continue row reducing, it's always good to look where the pivots are and what the free variables are. So you see the pivots are here in the first column, the third column here, E, S, and W. Okay. We know that Y will be a free variable, T will be a free variable, and W will be a free variable. And this will be very important for later on. And now what you want to do, you want to row reduce it until you get the reduced row echelon form. What is the reduced row echelon form? It's the pivots are 1, which is true in this case, but also anything in each pivot column has to be a bunch of zeros, except for the pivot. So what this means for this example is that you want to turn this minus 2 into a 0 and this 3 into a 0. So what you want to do here is simply um, turn this minus 2 into 0 by adding 2 times the second row to the first row. So I believe you get 1 minus 4, 0, 0, 3, and then minus 2, minus 5, so minus 7, and then 0. And then we still have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 4, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. It's all good, except now we also want to turn this 3 into a 0, and we can do this by subtracting 3 times the third row from the first row. And then what we get? Well, most of it is unchanged. Except we have 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then, so one, 3 minus 3 becomes 0. And then 12 minus 7 is 5. And that's 0. And then 0 minus 1, 0. Uh, 1 minus 4, 0. 0, 0, 0. And the nice thing is this is in reduced row echelon form. So, which means we are not allowed to back substitute. And remember what the free variables are. As I said, it's in the non-pivot columns. So it would be y, uh, so x, y, z, t, and s, no, and w. So we want to write all the variables in terms of y, t, and w. So what does the system become? The solutions then become x minus 4y plus 5w equals 0, and then z minus w equals 0, and then s minus 4w equals 0. So in other words, x it's 4y minus 5w, 
Z is W, and S is 4W. Now, that's not enough. This gives you the solution, and then we want to solve for X. I see there's another question I'll answer you in a second. And then we get X, Y, Z, uh, T, S, W. And now we just want to plug in all the info that's given to us. We know x is 4y minus 5w, y is y, z is w, t is t, s is 4w, and w is w. And everything else if you want is 0, and now we just want to separate everything out. What out? The y, the t, and the w. So this is really 4y, y, and then a bunch of zeros. So I think here's four zeros plus, so everything is zero except for the t, zero, 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 t, zero, zero. And then lastly, minus five w, zero, w, zero, four w, and w. And you can actually write this as a linear combo. We get y times a vector, four, one, zero, 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 zero plus t times a vector 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, plus w times a vector minus 5, 0, 1, 0, 4, 1. And if you want, you can write the general solution as simply being the span of those vectors. Okay, and I will do a linear independence dependence. So, uh, Oh, so the question is, why did we use the reduced row echelon form instead of the row echelon form? Look, if you have the row echelon form, you would have very convoluted equations. And for the, basically, it would be hard to solve x, y, x, all the variables in terms of free variables. And in fact, you can try it out. Try it out with the row echelon form, and then you'll see a bunch of equations that depend on each other. If you use the reduced row echelon form, what's nice is you can really separate out the non-free variables with the free variables. Here you can directly see, say for example, that x is four times the free variable minus five times the other free variable. So it's more elegant, and again, try it out, and you'll see why it works or not. Huh? Oh, why the t, so the question is, why is t and w zero? Uh, well, I didn't say it's zero. I just said we know from the beginning that there are three, three free variables, y, t, and w. So we have to write everything in terms of y, t, and w. Well, and we did it for x, z, and s. And then what's left is something that depends on y and w, something that depends on y and w, uh, another thing that depends on y and w, and this t is just t, but we know it is a free variable. So that's why we just let t equals t, because we don't really have any new info. We cannot express it in terms of the other variables. And then for the rest, we can express it in terms of the other ones. Okay, so an example of linear dependence or independence. So um, let's see. For example, let's try to, de to determine if the following vectors are linearly independent or dependent. So let's do, let's say, 1.7 number 1. Okay, so let's see. So 5, 0, let's try to figure out if 5, 0, 0, 7, 2 minus 6, and 9, 4 minus 8 are linearly independent or linearly dependent. And for this, How can I say? Uh, let, me, let me first tell you the more intuitive way of doing this, and then I will give you really the faster way of doing this. So to determine if they're linearly dependent or dependent, the definition always has to do with, are there A, B, and C 
such that a times the first vector plus b times the second vector plus c times the third vector, 9, 4, minus 8, is the zero vector or not. If there is a non-trivial linear combo that gives you zero, this means that the, there's a relationship between the vectors, so it would mean it's linearly dependent. On the other hand, if the only linear combo that gives you the zero vector is the one with zero, 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 it means there's no relationship between the vectors, and it's linearly uh, independent. Now, this is a system of equations. The nice thing is, you can write this in terms of matrices. 5, 0, 0, 7, 2, minus 6, 9, 4, minus 8, A, B, C, equals 0, 0, In other words, you just reduced it to solving the equation AX equals zero, where A is this matrix, simply putting the vectors together, X is this vector ABC, and zero is just a zero vector. So in other words, if there's a non-zero solution of this, then it's linearly dependent. If, there is a, if the only solution is a trivial solution, then it's linearly independent. And the slow way is actually solving this system, doing a row reduction. But there is a slightly faster way, because let's just put you know, everything, all the vectors in a matrix, and just row reduce this. So if you do 5, 7, 9, 0, 2, 4, 0, minus 6, minus 8, notice you can actually simplify. So let's do divide this by 2. And let's say divide this by a minus 3. Why not? No, actually, that doesn't work. Uh, divide this by 2, and then this one. Yeah, we can also divide this by negative 2 if you want. Again, just if you want. And then we get 5, 7, 9, 0, 1, 2, and then 0, let's say 3, 4. And then let's re reduce this. So ideally, turn this 3 into a 0. So 2 times negative 3. And we get uh, 5, let me think, uh, 5, 7, 9, 0, 1, 2, and then 0, 0, and then minus 6 plus 4, so minus 2. And again, it's very subtle, but remember, we don't have to show, find the solutions. We just need to show if the only solution is a 0 solution or not. And in particular, notice the following. Ax equals 0 always has a trivial solution. The question is, could there be other solutions? Well, in that case, notice the pivots. There are three pivots. 5, 1, negative 2. And in particular, there are no non-pivot columns. That means there are no free variables. And here's the thing about Ax equals 0. Either it only has a trivial solution, Or it has infinitely many solutions. That means free variables. And the reason is, if there's a non-zero solution x, then 2x is also a solution. 3x is a solution, etc., etc. So in particular here, we ruled out the case that there are free variables, and therefore this actually forces x to be zero. What this means is that a, b, and c are zero, which means that the only linear combo in the end is a trivial linear combo. So if you want, the quick way of doing this is put everything in a matrix. If there's a pivot in every column, bam, it's linearly independent. But let's say your matrix looked like that, I don't know, one, two, three, then there would be a non-pivot column, which would mean there would be a free variable, which means that there would be a, a non-zero solution, which means that it's linearly dependent. 
useful. And this for this course, all you need to know is put everything in a matrix. If it's linearly dependent, then I mean, if there's a pivot in every column, it's linearly independent. If there's a non-pivot column, it's linearly dependent. Good. You're welcome, you're welcome. I'm surprised, no questions about linear transformations. I'm guessing you'll do really well on the quiz tomorrow. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I don't know, I'm not writing the quizzes, so. Uh, <laughs> Good luck, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for you. I wanted to say I'm pressing my thumb, uh, which in German it means ich drück mir deine Daumen, meine Daumen, but that doesn't make sense in English, but it's okay. Sure. So the question is, is there another, can I do another problem with span? Not a problem at all. Mm, let me see. Okay, not a problem. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, let me do a couple of problems with that. So, um, or at least let me. Um, I won't do the complete problem, but I will show you how to do it. Basically, all you need to know, span just has to do with linear combinations. In other words, the span is the set of all linear combinations. So, for example, if I ask you, is, let's say, minus 2, 2, 9, suppose we have this vector, and the question is, is this vector in the span of, let's see, let's see, 1, 0, minus 2, 1, 0, minus 2, 2, 1, minus 4, And 4, 5, minus 3. So is this vector in that span? And all this means is, is this vector a linear combo of those three vectors? So in other words, are there a, b, and c such that a times 1, 0, minus 2, plus b times 2, 1, minus 4, plus c times 4, 5, minus 3 equals minus 2, 2, 9. And essentially, the question is, are there a, b, and c such that this is true? So in other words, what we want to ask ourselves is, is this system consistent? 2, 1, minus 4, and then 4, 5, minus 3. In other words, does this system have a solution? Okay. And first of all, what's interesting, remember linear independence brought us to Ax equals 0. Span brings us to Ax equals b. That's why there's this huge bubble that puts span ax equals b and rows together. Because those go very well together. And so what you have to do technically is solve this system, which means you form this matrix 1, 2, 4, 0, 1, 5, minus 2, minus 4, minus 3, and minus 2, 2, 9. Just careful, you actually don't have to solve it. You just have to figure out if there's a solution or not. And, but still, the beginning is the same. So we have to do the row reduction process. 
Okay, so let's see. Uh, we want to turn this minus 2 into 0, so we, we multiply this by 2, and then we get 1, 2, 4, minus 2, 0, 1, 5, 2, and then 0, uh, 4 minus 4 is 0, and then 8 minus 3, that is, no, so yeah, 8 minus 3, that's 5, and then minus 4 plus 9, that's 5, uh, 5 as well. And again, very important, I'm not asking you to solve for A, B, and C. All you need to know is figure out if this has a solution. And the best way of figuring out if something has a solution is simply of looking if there's a row of the form, 0, 0, 0, and something else. But look, there is a pivot in every row. So in part, I mean, not, not even pivots. There is no row of the form 0, 0, something else. And that's why the answer is actually yes. That specific vector minus 2, 2, 9 is indeed in the span of those three, the other three vectors. In fact, we can say more about this. So the question is, suppose I ask you, is the span of uh, those three vectors, is the span 1, 0, minus 2, 2, 1, minus 4, and 4, 5, minus 3, is that equal to the whole space? Technically, what this means is, any, if I give you any vector b, can you solve ax equals b? Well, it turns out that you can, because you would just put everything in a matrix, 2, 1, minus 4, 4, 5, minus 3, you would row reduce this matrix, again, using the exact same steps. And you get 1, 2, 4, minus 1, 2, 4, sorry, and then 0, 1, 5, and then 0, 0, 5. And notice there is a pivot in every row, which means no matter which B I give you, there will never be a row of the form 0, 0, something else. And that's why no matter which p I give you, it'll always be in the span of those vectors. So in this case, also the answer is yes. In other words, the span of those three vectors is actually all of R3. So if you want it as a generalization, if there's a pivot in every row of your matrix, then the span is the whole space. But careful if this there's, well, if there's not a pivot in every row, sure, the span is not the whole space, but it could still be that for some specific vectors, that vector is in the linear combination. So yeah, any other question about spans, just let me know. Yes, so let's see, uh, 1.7 number nine. And by the way, so I have to leave in, I mean, the office hour is done in 15 minutes because there's the other class that's waiting. But let's see, 1.7, number 9. Uh, wait, 1.7, okay. Uh, did I assign this? Okay. Uh, all right, so the question is for which h, or maybe I did, okay. For which h is 5 minus 7 h? In the span, let's see, uh, yes, for which values is that third vector in the span of the other two? So V1 is, again, it's those H problems which are awesome because they're so easy to grade. So 1 minus 3, 2. V2 is a minus 3, 9, minus 6. And V3 is, let's see, a 5 minus 7 H. The question is, for which value of H is this vector in the span of uh, the other two? And let me just check, yeah. And well, for this, just as I said, a second ago, what you have to do is you have to figure out for which h the system ax equals b is consistent. 
So take 1 minus 3, 2, minus 3, 9 minus 6, 5 minus 7, h, and you want to just figure out for which h does this system have a solution. Well, what can we, what else can we do? Just row reduce. So you multiply this by 3, and you multiply this by minus 2, and you get 1 minus 3, 5. And then 0, 0, and then 15 minus 7, which is 8. Like, almost like 007, but no, 008. And then um, 0, and then let's see, uh, 6 minus 6, 0. And then uh, 10, so sorry, minus 10, I think, plus h. Well, it's kind of interesting because you don't even need to know the values of h. Well, notice you have the row of the form 0, 0, 8. So unless I make a mistake, it means that this system is not consistent. So it turns out for no values of h, this, uh, this third vector is uh, in the span of the other two. And which actually, let's see, I think that makes sense because notice v2 is actually a multiple of v1. So the picture looks like that. That is v1, maybe that is v2. And well, we v3 is just another vector that's not on this line. So no matter what the value of h is, it, v3 can never be on this line. Okay, that's the first thing, and then the question is, for which values of h is this set linearly independent, or dependent, or something? Um, then what you would do, just as what I talked about for linear independence or dependence, you would, again, row reduce, you put all those three vectors in a matrix, row reduce, and see if there's a free variable or not. So. And by the way, there's a much quicker answer because this vector is a multiple of this one. So it'll always be linearly dependent, even uh, no matter what value of h is. Well, suppose I give you a more complicated example. You would row reduce. And that's a good question. No? Thank you. You inspired me for the exam. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we get uh, 1 minus 3, 5. A good question. Oh my god. Okay, uh, and then so 0, 0, I'm sorry, 0, 0, 8, of course, and then uh, 0, and then 0, and then minus 10 plus h. And again, this time you want to look for, I mean, technically this is not in uh, row echelon form yet, so let's reduce it even further. Minus 3, 5. 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 0, minus 10 plus h. Then multiply this by, I think, a minus h. Sorry, times. Actually, uh, yeah, times minus h plus 10. When would you ever do that? But uh, you would then get 1 minus 3, 5, 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 0, 0. And you see, where are the pivots? They're in the first and the third column, which means no matter which value of h, the second column will always be a free variable. So really the answer is all h. And notice we didn't even divide by any zero value, so this is actually legit. And just as I said, it's because the second vector is a multiple of the first one. So it doesn't even matter which ones have uh, um, what the third vector is. It'll always be linearly dependent. Yes, that's a good question. So you didn't realize it would be like an augmented matrix. You just have to uh, be careful because for the span question, you solve ax equals b. So technically you put the first two vectors as a coefficient and the third one as the b. But for uh, linear independence, dependence, you put all of three of them together as a coefficient matrix. Just beware. Yes.
Why is that? Hmm. Let me just check. It's like I hope I didn't just put the wrong section. That's the I did a sign, huh? Okay. <laughs> oh my god, wait, did I? Interesting. Alright, alright. So it is. I just. Uh... Oh, wait. Hey, hey, hey. By the way, so do you who has number 9 in 1.7, it's number 9 in 1.5, I'll just beware. Uh, so unfortunately, I have no access to the discussion worksheets at, at all. You have to ask your TA. Your TA is like responsible for all the worksheets. And again, I have no idea what the quizzes are. I have no idea what the worksheets are. All I told the TA is just to make it very similar to the suggested homework. So. If you notice like a huge discrepancy, just let me know. Uh, is the bracket that I'm assuming you mean a vector? Uh, yeah, I mean, for a linear transformation, very important, t of cx is indeed ct of x. So in other words, you can always pull that constant out. And I don't know if that reminds you of something, but in calculus, you did the derivative, and indeed, you can check that the derivative of cf is c times the derivative of f. So just like for a linear transformation. But again, for a non-linear transformation, anything can happen. So anything is possible if you're non-linear, but then you don't have nice properties. Okay, so for a matrix of a linear transformation, um, there are two things. So one of them is calculating the matrix of a linear transformation. So let's see, let's say I give you, let's say t of x, y, it's, I don't know, x plus 2y, 3x plus 4y. To calculate the matrix of a linear transformation, it's always the same thing. You calculate t of 1, 0 and t of 0, 1. Okay. Which means you use the definition, but you plug in x equals 1, y equals 0, which tells you 1 plus 2 times 0, and then 3 plus 4 times 0 which is 1, 3. And for t of 0, 1, it's 0 plus 2 times 1, and 3 times 0 plus 4 times 1, which is 2, 4. And then you put all of them in a matrix to get 1, 3, 2, 4. See, this comes in the first column, this comes in the second column. Always, always, always the same procedure. In fact, people are confused by this because they overthink it. Literally, don't think. Calculate those two values, put them in a matrix. That's your matrix A. And what does that mean? The consequence is this linear transformation just means you multiply A pi by a vector. So in other words, if you want a formula for T of x, T just becomes A, so T of x equals AX. So that's what I meant, you know, in lecture, T of x equals AX. So here, T of xy is AXY, which becomes 1, 2, 3, 4 times XY. And then in chapter 2, you will learn how to multiply matrices. But basically what you get is 1 times x plus 2 times y. So 1x plus 2 times y. And 3 times x plus 4 times y. 
Again, that's how we will multiply matrices, and that is just x plus 2y, and then 3x plus 4y. So that's really the definition of the matrix of a linear transformation. It's methodologically, you calculate those two things, put them in a matrix, but really what this means is that T is just multiplication by this matrix A. And in fact, notice we do get the exact same example. And again, we have two minutes left, so any other questions? So, so. Does that make more sense, hopefully? Perfect. And again, we'll, we'll talk more about this on Friday. So we have a whole other lecture about linear transformations. Maybe with more practice, hopefully it'll make more sense. Say, uh, find a matrix of Tx, then yeah, then, then you do this process. But in general, we give you Tx. We don't, uh, um, yeah, we, we don't ask you to find Tx. Unless there's a problem you've been thinking of. You, you mean the quiz? So the quiz covers everything on the suggested homework problems. So generally the last three lectures, including today's, but really the best way is just look at the suggested problems. And then I probably, I think I covered everything. So, uh, so in particular, no one-to-one -one and onto, because we'll do that uh, uh, on Friday. Okay, and I think unfortunately it's time to wrap up. If you have any other questions, you can always email me. And well, I guess see you Friday. I hope you like this. Thank you. Have a good evening too.